Hi, this is Bo Sanchez and welcome to Kerygma TV and Happy New Year and allow the Lord to give you courage. Today, we're going to start a new fantastic series and yes, the title is Courage because that's what you need in order to achieve the dreams that God has planted in your heart. So allow Him to bless your life today. Five tips to ensure you achieve your New Year's resolutions. First, keep your list short. The reason many people fail at achieving their New Year's resolutions is because they have too many competing priorities. Choose no more than three resolutions, two personal and one professional, or vice versa. Second, set time frames. When it comes to setting any goal, a time frame in which you will achieve that goal is important. Set check-in dates for yourself, use a reminder on your phone, and hold yourself accountable for reaching the milestones you set for yourself. Third, tell someone. The best way to keep yourself accountable for your New Year's resolutions is to tell someone else what your goals for the year are. Ask them to help you stay accountable as you both work towards achieving your goals. Fourth, record your progress. Use a calendar or journal to track your progress. Choose one day per week to check in on your weekly mini goals. Use a highlighter to make the milestones stand out visually so that you can see how far you've come as the weeks tick by. Finally, reward yourself. Give incentives to yourself to keep reaching for the next milestone by taking time to reward your progress. Positive reinforcement of your achievements will only serve to motivate you to keep at it. And of course, pray for it. Pray to God for strength and endurance to achieve your goals and the perseverance to keep at it even when you fail. This month, we're going to launch a brand new series called Courage. Everybody shout Courage. 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 How many of you need some more courage in your life this year? I need some courage in my life. That's right. Together, we're going to learn how to get out, get out of our comfort zone and enter into that zone called our courage zone. We're going to have four Sundays. T today's talk is called Courageous Obedience. Can you say that? Courageous Obedience. That's right. And you're going to want to hear all the four talks. Why? Because you're going to want to start a new thing this year. Yes? You're going to want to chase some new dreams, some new goals, some new plans. But guess what? Along the way in chasing those dreams, there will be a deterrent that will try to derail you. There will be a hindrance that will try to stop you. And that is what you call fear. Fear is real, my dear friends. Fear is that enemy of dream chasers like you like you like you it's gonna try to stop you it's gonna try to prevent you but thank god because here's the good news fear won't ever come from the lord that's what second timothy chapter 1 verse says that fear does not come from god instead what does god give he gives you power love and peace so god's gonna give you some things in the form of more power more love more peace that will help you achieve your dreams this year and my prayer my prayer for all of you is that during this series all of you will be set free this series will liberate you it will remove the shackles that have prevented you that have blocked you that have kept you from living the life that God has called you to live I pray I pray that the prison doors that have trapped you for so long will finally swing open so that you not only walk out but you walk out with courage with determination are you ready to receive some courage today then say I'm ready amen we're gonna do this for the first time this year so i want you to make this as meaningful as possible say every word with a deep conviction in your heart all right we're gonna say our favorite family prayer at the feast here we go in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen everybody stretch your hands out until you pull a muscle and then say today i receive all of god's love for me today i open myself to the unbounded limitless overflowing abundance of God's universe today I open myself to God's blessings healing and miracles 
Today I open myself to God's Word so I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. Shout it out. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So for the entire month, let me just lay down the foundation. For the entire month, we're going to take one story from the Bible. It's a story that I believe that all of us here have heard. If you've read the Bible even just once, you would know this story. It's a story of how, Abra of how God asked Abraham to sacrifice his one and only son. How many of you know this story? Raise your hand. Good. So we're going to break down this story for four Sundays, verse by verse, layer by layer, and peel it down. All right? Are you ready? Let's all read the story coming from Genesis chapter 22, verse 1. Everybody ready, set, go. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. Go ahead. He called him Abraham. And Abraham answered, yes, here I am. Take your son, God said, your only son Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah, there on a mountain that I will show you. Offer him as a sacrifice to me. Everybody say sacrifice. Story is a little bit controversial, all right? There are, there's, there's some contradiction happening right there. Because let me point it out to you. On one side, you see God asking Abraham to sacrifice his one and only son, yes? But on the other side, if you've studied and read the Old Testament, you would notice that God actually hated this religious practice of human sacrifice. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 31, you must not worship the Lord your God in their way because in worshiping their gods, they do all kinds of detestable things that the Lord hates. There it is. The Lord hates. They even burn their sons and daughters in the fire as sacrifices to their gods. God hates it. Let me show you an example of just how violent some of these religions were in the past. This is Moloch, all right? Let me tell you all about Moloch. Moloch was a Canaanite deity. A more modern term for that would be he was an idol, all right? Uh, an idol that they worship. Not an American idol or a Philippine idol. He was an, a man-made idol. People that they created it so that they could worship him. Now, they, they fashioned him with iron, but in his belly, in his middle portion, there would be a raging furnace. That's where they would throw the sacrifices, all right? To offer to him. Now, we still do this in modern times. You know, we still have a furnace and maybe every now and then we would throw a pig and out would come out lechon, you know, sacrificing it in the altar of your hunger. But during those times, you know, you want to know what they threw in? Ask me what? Babies. They threw in babies and out would come baby back ribs, right? It was a crazy practice. I'm just trying to make you laugh. It was a crazy practice. Do you agree? crazy practice. I have no idea what they were thinking. But here's the question. If God abhorred and detested and hated, just like the Bible says, if He hated human sacrifice, why did He ask Abram in the first place to sacrifice His own son? Curious, right? The first part of that passage gives us the answer actually. Plain and simple. It says in verse 1, sometime later, God tested Abram. Everybody say, tested. It was a test. You know, God was testing Abraham. We're going to talk more about this in, in, in the following weeks. Talk to next week. We're going to dive into that as to why you have to go through certain tests in your life. But let's be honest, all right? Many times in your life, you struggled between obeying your fear and obeying God. Am I right? And more often, often than not, you usually obeyed your fear first. Yes? Am I right? Or am I right? Of course I'm right. You obeyed your fear first. But ang ang What if I fail? What if I don't succeed? What if I don't get well? What if I can't pay these bills? Fear always comes first. It's a training that has been given to us ever since childhood, you know? Even when you were young, how did your parents make you obey them? 
They scared you, right? There are two words in the English language that if you put it at the end of every sentence, it becomes very scary to children. You want to know what those words are? Or else. Two words. Two words for an adult. You know, it's just plain words. But for a child, it's like a time bomb that's waiting to explode. Do your homework. Or else. Fix your, 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 your room. Or else. Do your chores. Or else. Sometimes you do it long enough, you don't even have to finish the sentence. You just have to, you know, do your homework. Do your chores. No, you just nod. Or you can even do the Batman voice. Finish your homework. Or else. We do stuff to scare our kids. That was a, that's what we do. And so we grow up being afraid. We always put fear first. But if, the, if this is something that we learned in the past, if we learned it before, then it's certainly something we can unlearn now. Would you agree? That's what we want to achieve in this series. We want God to change the wiring in our heads and in our heart so much so that when we face every encounter, every circumstance, we don't turn to our fear first. We turn to our faith first. That's what we want to learn. We turn to God first. By the end of this series, my deep and profound prayer is that you would have the supernatural courage to put God first, to obey God first. Even if it means that it'll hurt you sometimes, even if it's difficult for your dream, you obey God first, all right? I'm excited for this series in January. As Audie was talking about the story of Abraham and Isaac, this amazing, amazing, amazing story, conflicting, controversial, but beautiful and powerful with a powerful message. We're going to talk about courage. Everybody say courage. courage. God has dreams for your life. Do I hear a loud amen? amen? God has dreams for your year. God's going to open new doors. God's going to pave new paths. God is going to do a lot of things in your life. But if you want those dreams to come true, you need to have courage. You need to have boldness. You need to be brave. And many of us act in fear. And so... Audie and I will, will be praying that at the end of this series, you will have enough courage to do what God wants you to do. If you believe that God's going to do something this January, through this series, as you receive the Word of God, make a happy noise, everybody. Make a happy noise. I'm going to invite you to, 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 again, you know, this is the first feast of the year, so let's, let's set the standard. Everybody say standard. standard. If you want to be the, the audience that God wants you to be at the feast for 2019, I want you to be a noisy audience, all right? Be noisy, respond, react, you know, shout amen or shout yes, brother Bo or whatever, you know. Just, just shout, you're handsome. I mean, you know, whatever you want to shout, just. Thank you. We're going to pick out this story, Abraham, Isaac, God asking Isaac to offer his own son, in other words, to kill him. You know, crazy, crazy story. Uh, Audie was already explaining to you a bit, you know. What we're going to do is I'm going to pick out three strategies on how to have more courage from this story. Are you ready? Say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Strategy number one is to take the first step, first tiny step right away. In verse 3 of chapter 22, the story goes like this. So God already tells him, you offer Isaac. So early the next morning, Abraham cut some wood for the sacrifice, loaded his donkey, and took Isaac for, and two servants with him. Read the next line with me. They started out for the place that God had told him about. Everybody say, started out. If there's one thing that you need to do, you need to start out. I want you to elbow somebody beside you really hard until that rib gets broken and say, start out. <laughs> Our problem is we know what to do already. We're not starting out. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? You know you're supposed to lose weight. You know you're supposed to improve your relationship with your daughter. You know. I mean, you, you absolutely know. You, you, you've been thinking of that sideline for the longest time. And all you... 
you know, you've, you've got the books and you've, you've asked people, but you, you, you don't start. You, everybody say start. start. You know, you've, you've been at, three of your friends have already lost 20 pounds because of IF. And they already told you, ah, uh, that, that's intermittent fasting. They, 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 they don't eat for 16 hours. They only eat eight hours during the day. Three of your friends said, this works, you know, and, and you've got to add water. Just, just drink lots and lots and lots of water. And, and, and they, they, they recommend the book already by, by, by Dr. Paragas to you. And, you know, you've, you've heard it uh, uh, there in the book table. And, and, and they, but you don't start. Everybody say, it's time to start. And that's what Abraham did. Can you imagine how confused Abraham was? God tells him, offer your son Isaac. Huh? What? Offer like, like symbolically, Lord, I offer. No, kill. And then put on the wood and burn. What? You're against that. You hate that. With the Canaanites and the other religions and all the other idols who do that. And then you're telling me to do it. He was probably so confused. Not only was he confused because of that, he was confused of another reason. Ask me what? Years ago, God told Abraham, Abraham, you're going to be the father of nations. You're going to be the father of many, many nations. Look at the stars. That's the number of people that will come out of you. And, and, and Abraham probably snickered and said, <laughs> no kid. No kid, Lord. No kid. How can I be the father of many nations? I don't have even one. I'm old. I'm an old man. I, I'm, a, I've been, I'm a has-been. Hello. And then God says, I'm going to give you a son. And then boom. It's his wife, Sarah, gives birth. Isaac, yes, I have a son. And then a few years later, Abraham, kill your son. Wait a minute, what, what, how about that promise? That promise you told me I'm going to be the father of many nations. You understand how confused? How many of you get confused sometimes? You know what? Even if you're confused, take the first step. You got that? Everybody say, even if I'm confused... I'll take the first tiny step right away. It's got to be right away. Have you already, like even before January 1 or, 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 or a day after, you, you already sat down, you know, wrote some plans. I'm going to start my sideline. I'm going to earn this money and this is what I'm going to do. How many of you have stuff in your house that you've not used for the past year? Raise your hand. Clothes, shoes, gadgets, whatever. You have? Can you sell them online through FB? Why not start there as a sideline? Hey, earn some money. You know, now here's the thing, here's the thing. Okay, this is my sideline. This is what I'm going to do. This is, this is how much I'm going to earn. You know what? Before the day ends. Everybody say, before the day ends. You've got to take that first step. Don't sleep without making. It's called the law of momentum. Put that on your side. Here's strategy number two. This is what happens. Next verse. On the third day, Abraham saw the place in the distance. Then he said to the servants, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there and worship. Read the line with me. And then we will come back to you. Say that again. And then we will come back to you. I love that line. He did not say, my son and I, we will go over there and we will worship and then I will get back to you. No, he said, we. He believed that God's going to do something that he and his son will be able to come back. Did, did you get that? that and how? He doesn't know how it's going to happen. In the book of Hebrews, way outside, way in the New Testament, it says there that Abraham perhaps believe that God will resurrect his son after killing him. God, he, you know, he didn't know. He didn't know the how. He didn't know how God will do it, which, which is strategy number two. Focus on the why, not the how. Because if you focus on the how, you will even be more fearful. That, that's what, that's what, that's what happens when, my dear friends, there are, we, you've got dreams. You've got goals. Sometimes we don't know how it's going to happen. 
But I want you to believe that if your why is big enough, the how does not matter. The how will take care of itself. If you believe and if you hold on to that why. Abraham believed that something good will happen because God is good. That's why. That's why something good. And as you face this new year, I want you to believe that. Everybody say this with me. Something good will happen because God is good. Do you believe in that? I want you to, I want you to shout that out. I want you to say that again. Everybody say, something good will happen this year because God is good. Everybody say, I don't know how. You don't know how, but that's okay. I, I, I want you to take that first step. Even if you don't know what is step 96 or step 942, you still don't know. But you know what's the first step. You take that first step. Do I hear a loud amen? amen. What keeps you fearful is fussing on the how. And you've got to make that decision. You know what? Let, let, me, let me say this to you. This is very, very important. Everybody say, I'm listening. I love wisdom. I read lots of books. I, I don't have a library in my house. My library has a house. That's how I have so many books. It's crazy. I love reading. I'm, voracious, I'm a voracious reader. I love going to mentors. But, everybody say but. but. There are half of you. Half of you. You already know what to do. You already have the wisdom. You've read enough books. You've asked enough mentors. You already, you don't need more wisdom. You need more courage. And, and, and there, there, you know what? I, again, I, I'm not saying, you know, go right and jump. No, get all the wisdom that you can. But at the end of the day, there comes a point when you say, I've got to make that first step. And you don't know yet the how. It's okay. The why is more important. Everybody say the why. Can, can, I, can I give you a little entrepreneurial lesson for entrepreneurs? Listen to me. Listen to me. You know, you've seen this sometimes, that the founder of the business, of that tiny, tiny, tiny business, he makes it grow, he makes it grow. And after 20 years, it's a big company. He hires executives who are professional, who've got all the skill, who know the how. And sometimes it works. The company becomes three times bigger and four times bigger. Sometimes it does not work. Ask me why. It does not work sometimes because the founder was able to pass on the how, but not the why. There is no fire in the belly. The hunger is not there with the other guys, with the other executives. Do you understand me? Because why is more important than the how. Because if you know why you're doing what you're doing, if you have the why behind your dream, you will find a way how to do it. You'll crawl, you'll run, you'll jump, you'll walk, you'll open doors, you'll, you'll do whatever, you, whatever it takes. Here's principle number three. Are you ready? Are you ready? Verse 6, Abraham made Isaac carry the wood. You just imagine that. You've got this little boy. Abraham carrying the wood for the sacrifice. And he himself carried a knife and live coals to start the fire. As they walked along together, Isaac spoke up. Father. He answered. No, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Father. <laughs> and he answered, yes, my son. Isaac asked. I see that you have the coals and the wood. But where is the lamb for this sacrifice? Abraham answered. <laughs> you can just imagine. You're the little kid, right? And you're, you're bringing the wood. And, and you notice that there's the wood, there's the coal, there's the knife. But where's the animal? And so you ask your dad, where's the lamb? You can just imagine the position of Abraham. Uh, G uh, um, 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 and then you know what he said? He said, he said, God himself will provide one. And the two of them walked on together. You see, you and I, we're like Isaac. We look at the wood, we look at the coal, we look at the knife, and we say, 
where, where, where's, where's the answered prayer? Where's the miracle? Where's the provision? Where's the provision? Principle number three. You've got to understand this. The provision you're praying for, it's you. The miracle you're praying for, you. You, you are the miracle you're praying for. And, and don't, don't clap yet. Don't clap. You clap after I say this. <laughs> a lot of times, hey, hey, let me backtrack a bit. Do you want a fantastic 2019? Yes. Do you want some miracles to happen in this year? Do you want some answered prayer to happen? Do you want some dreams achieved this year? Yes. You've got to do step one, and step one is this. Are you ready? Say, I'm ready. Before you see some miracles happen in your life, you've got to believe with all your heart that you already are by yourself a miracle. You yourself are an answered prayer. You, you, you are made in the image and likeness of God. You have, you need strength, it's in you. You need joy, it's within you. You need wisdom, it's within you. You need peace, it's within you. You need love, it's within you. You are a walking miracle. You are. I want you to stand up, stand up, and I want you to believe this. I want you to believe this. We're, we're going to enter into prayer, but before I do, let me ch just, just, just prepare and set it up for you with a story. When I was 10 years old, I didn't like myself and I wasn't happy because my grades were bad. Do I have some classmates here? <laughs> and not only were my grades bad, I was horrible in sports really horrible. What made it worse was I had a seatmate. He was new in the, in the school. His name was Ariel. And man, he was the star player of every game in PE. He was, I mean, any game with a ball, football, baseball, volleyball, basketball. He was MVP. Me? I was MBP, most bano player. I, I would be dribbling and I'd fall, trip, the, I was just horrible. And the only game that, with a ball that I was good at was Jackstone. <laughs> because I had five older sisters, I had no choice. We were a co-ed school and Ariel, he saw three girls seated on the floor playing jackstone. He sat beside them. He beat them all. He did 10 perfect exhibitions. <laughs> oh, you, you play the game, huh? huh? <laughs> and, and it was just, he is so good in anything. It's like, but let me tell you, that guy, Ariel, he was only, not only good in sports, he was our first honor. And so there I was, just, you know, beside him, I felt, I felt like this, like so incredibly small. Well, one day, homeroom teacher comes in and says, remember class, I told you to bring some art material. Today, we're gonna make a, we're gonna draw our own little greeting card and we're gonna give it to a classmate. And I kind of like smiled and I said, I'm not good in sports. I'm horrible in academics. But if there's one thing I know I'm good at, it's drawing. In fact, that's the reason why I wasn't good in class. I wasn't listening to the class. I was just drawing, you know. <laughs> Half of my notebook was filled with Superman and Tarzan and Spider-Man and Batman and Voltus V. I mean, that, that, that was me. That was me. And so I, I smiled. I said, yeah, good. Got a piece of paper, folded it, started drawing. Superman in all his blue and red blazing glory. And then the teacher said, are you done, class? If you're done, pick a random classmate and give your greeting card. Ariel gives me his card. And I got it. And I looked at it. And I froze. I froze. His drawing, it was like, it was made by a Disney animator. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> I, I wanted, my heart was screaming, what can you not do? 
I just, I opened it. My gosh, the calligraphy was perfect. That it was like it came out from a printing press. The words, you know, for a 10 year old kid, that was fantastic. You know what it said? I like blue ships. I like red ships. But most of all, I like friendships. <laughs> Thank you for being my friend, Ariel. I wanted to kill him. Why are you so good? You know what? I said, wow, and I thought I was good in drawing. And I, I felt so ashamed of my card. I slowly hid it. You know, just not worthy. You know, that day I remember I went past by the, the school chapel, sat on the last row, nobody was there. I remember I felt so horrible. I felt so sad. That, that was one dark day of my 10-year-old life because I looked at God in that chapel and I said, God, you're unfair. On the day that you were distributing talents, why did you skip me? I'm bad in here, I'm bad in that, I'm not good in this, I thought I was good in drawing, and then, you know, really, really sad. Of course, I did not know. I did not know that three years later, just three years later, I would speak to a prayer group of 30 people. And three years later, when I was 16 years old, I, I would be already speaking to 20,000 people in the Araneta Coliseum. And, and, and the... You know, in hindsight, I look back. If I could only travel back in time, if I could, I would visit that 10-year-old boy in the last pew of that school chapel. And I would sit beside him. And I'd put my arm around that kid. And I'd say, little Bo, just wait. Just wait. Because... The very thing you're looking for is already inside you. You are the miracle that you're praying for. Everything that you need for happiness and success and, you know, that not, not false success, but the real success that really matters, it's all inside you. Little Bo, you are a walking miracle and you 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 just wait and i speak that word to you right now right now this moment you may be feeling bad that whatever you know stuff is happening it's all a mess and you you lack this and you lack that and you feel inadequate here you feel inadequate there you compare yourself with some batchmate you compare yourself with a friend you compare yourself with some person in the office and you say why why is that person so blessed why am i not you just wait you just wait You're the miracle you've been praying for. You really are. You just don't see it yet, but it's all there. Can I lead you into prayer? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Can I invite you? If this is a comfortable posture for you, just raise your hands and surrender. And just say this after me, Jesus, I thank you that this day, you're filling my heart with courage. That the miracle I'm praying for is me. I am the answered prayer. You have already provided everything that I need to do what you want me to do. The strength, the wisdom, the joy, the peace, the love. I am 
the miracle that I am praying for. I am the walking miracle. In Jesus' name. si Kaloy Dimson ang uh, operations head ng Anuwi. Ako po ay nag-umpisang naglingkod dito sa Anuwi 2007. Napunta ko dito sa Anuwi because uh, one time yung nurse ng Anuwi naghahanap ng social worker. Uh, ako ay isang social work graduate. It's a big blessing na sinabi niya ate kung gusto mo mag-social uh, work pwede kang mag-apply. Kukuk ko ako ng pare at ako po ay patulong-tulong lang po doon hanggang sa ako ay nai-refer dito dahil na-find out nila talagang orban ako. Nung napunta po ako dito sa Anawin, na-upset po ako tsaka na-depress. Pero sa pagtagal-tagal ko po dito, naisip ko na ba't ako ma-depress, ba't ako ma-upset. Instead, it's a big blessing for me and I'm really very grateful that we have Anna Wing. Hinala ako ang kapatid ko umatid dito sa Anna Wing. Wala akong naramdaman na natakot ko sa'yo naman dito. Hindi na ako nagsisipak ng gawin, hindi ako nangangako. Hindi na ako nagluluto. Dito, kakain ka na lang. Maglikod sa ating matatanda, hindi yan basta-basta lang kasi kailangan ng mahabang pangunawa, pasensya because we all know naman na ang mga lola dito ay they are abandoned and rejected by their families na talagang sila may mabibigat sa kanilang dibdib na. Nandito kami para yung mga bigat nila ay through communication, pinapapil namin na love namin sila at still sila ay importante pa dito sa mundo. Maraming mga challenges bilang isang mamahala. Una ito yung funding. Without fund, talagang hindi mo ma-push kung ano yung gusto mong proyekto na gagawin. Hindi rin maganda ang pag-aalaga kapag uh, walang pondo. Pinagdadasal ko po lahat yun. Yung mga board of trustees, yung mga management and staff, pahabain niyo pa po ang buhay nila. Gabi ko. It's not because of anything else. I'm really very grateful there is Anna Wim. Kasi pag may nagpumunta ng tumutulong sa'yo, so, pinapupunta kami rito, siyempre na mapapasalamat ako sa mga tumutulong. Mga... Sa lahat ng mga donors na nagbibigay ng kanilang blessing dito sa Anawim, kami po ito at gusto nagpapasalamat at uh, ito ay malaking biyaya na amin natatanggap. Your support, your help financially or in kind, grabe, maraming mapupuntahan, maraming masisiyahan. And yung aming pagtulong sa mga elderly ay ma-extend pa, dadami pa. Dadami pang mga elderly ang matutulungan because of you. To all the donors and sponsors of, uh, and benefactors of Anawin, thank you so much for everything. And I hope you'll continue all the blessings you are giving us. And I thank God for all of you. Especially, thank you for all the love. Maraming salamat po sa tumutulong. Thank you for the love. God bless and thank you for the love. Thank you for the love. Thank you so much for being part of this show and thank you for being part of this ministry. You know what? I need your help. Without you, we can't do this. We won't be able to bring God's love to many more people through this TV show without you. And you know, your contribution, your prayer, your, your being there is such a blessing. For any amount that you want to help us, my way of thanking you is sending you the first talk of our message and courage. It will bless your life. And for 2,000 peso gift or more, I'll not only give you this one message, but the entire series on courage, all the talks, this powerful message will just 
your life, you know, you think about it, you need bravery, you need courage to be able to go cross that, that chasm that's there. It's an obstacle and, and this, the messages here, will bless you, your family, your friends, you know, you can share it to other people. Plus, I'm gonna send also to your home my book, Limitless. Yes, the blessings of God are limitless. I pray that it will open your mind. So for a gift of 2,000 pesos or more, you will get the, all the messages of courage plus this book sent to your home. The contact details are on the screen. Tell us, yes, Brother Bo, I want to be your, your partner in ministry. Thank you so, so very much. God bless you. I was only four years old when I was in the fire. It was on a Thanksgiving night, and the same fire that took the lives of my two brothers, I was pulled out and given a second chance at life. In the fire, I had lost fingers, and I had lost my hair. Many, many days where it was just hard to stay strong and hang in there. Growing up was tough. I was picked on and stared at all the time, and there were just times that I didn't think that I would make it through it. After many, many surgeries and being told I would be in a vegetable state for the rest of my life, God had other plans. I was told by many doctors that I would never be able to have children. It was always hard to think I would one day have a family of my own. By the grace of God, I found my husband, who is also a burn survivor. Sometimes when things don't go according to plan, we seem to lose faith, but I was determined to make things work. I had to have faith that life would be okay. I had to have faith that I would have a family, and I had to have faith that God would keep us together. Having faith in God has helped me become who I am today. To think of me as that little girl that never wanted to leave the house and to be where I am today, that all took faith. If I were to give anyone any type of encouragement today, it would be to not give up even when you feel faithless, even when you feel like everything is going wrong, know that God is big enough to handle your doubts in any situation that you are in. Yeah. 
Brothers and sisters, and all, invite the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts, fill this place as we sing to Him. Spirit of God, for fresh on us, we need Your presence. Your kingdom come. Your will be done here as in heaven. With one voice. Spirit of God, for fresh on us, we need your presence. Your kingdom come, your will. inside you and you just don't see it yet I want you to know that when I was a 10 year old boy I did not see I thought drawing was my talent the reason why I love drawing was because my real talent was imagination and if again if I wanted to if I only could talk to that 10 year old boy I would say that's that's the provision of God your imagination and a day will come when you will not anymore draw with a pencil you'll draw with stories and you'll no longer draw on paper you will draw on the canvas of people's minds the gift that God has given to you you don't see it because it's inside and right now you have been given a gift I do not know what that is maybe it's perseverance you don't see it but it's already there or maybe it's your ability just to talk with people and make people happy you don't see it but it's already there or maybe maybe it's your industry 
your hard work ethic, or maybe it is your ability to make people comfortable, or may, I mean, I don't know, but it's already there. You are the miracle of God. So, so pray with me, pray with me right now that you're gonna follow Jesus for 2019. That you're gonna make a commitment. You're gonna follow him no matter what. You're gonna put him first. You're gonna put God as the center of your life. It is amazing to hear God's word and I pray that your hearts are open to receive his blessing and his courage. You need his courage to be able to obey. You know, right now you might be thinking, you know, what is the Lord telling me? God is telling you something and I pray for that courage so that you'll be able to do what God wants you to do. Can I pray for you? That right now, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we enter your presence. You are so good. And I pray for every person watching this video, every person watching this episode, that your power flow in their lives, specifically the spirit of courage, so that they will obey what you want them to do, so that you will bless them right now in Jesus' name. And I pray for every need that they have, that you be their provider, you be their healer, you be, be their miracle worker right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, thank you so much for being part of Kerygma TV. I want you to live a fantastic life.